Somebody has to look at me to determine that I'm alive and I'm not dead. Well, who determines him? Somebody has to look at him. And this is called Wigner's friend. Wigner was the winner of the Nobel Prize. He helped to build the atomic bomb. And this is called Wigner's friend. I have an infinite sequence of Wigner's friend. So who's the ultimate Wigner's friend? God. So starting with quantum theory, which is the most objective, reductionist theory of all time, you go all the way up to God. Now let's say you don't want that. Let's say you don't believe in this Nobel Prize winner. Let's say you believe in the other theory. The other theory is even worse. The other theory is many worlds. Most Nobel laureates now are leaning toward the second. Steve Weinberg, winner of the Nobel Prize, has said the following. Imagine you're in a room and many radio frequencies are in the same room. Your radio is turned into one frequency, but you're very comfortable being in a room with many frequencies, right? But you tune into one. Well, these frequencies are now wave functions. In this room, there's the wave function of dinosaurs. In this room, because they never died 65 billion years ago, because a cosmic event prevented the extinction of the dinosaurs. In this room, there's the wave function of aliens, because perhaps aliens decided to colonize the Earth millions of years ago. In this room, there's the wave function of Alexander the Great. Perhaps he came all the way to the Americas instead of being just con conquering uh, uh, most of the old world. Think about it. Your mind goes crazy. This is the multiverse. So welcome to the multiverse. We now believe that perhaps there are an infinite number of universes out there. Most of them probably dead universes. But some of them may be separated from our universe by a single quantum event. The smallest quantum event is a cosmic ray. Let's say a cosmic ray goes through Hitler's mother. Hitler's mother has a miscarriage. Hitler's never born. All of a sudden, perhaps 40, 50 million people didn't have to die, and they're living with us today. Or perhaps a cosmic ray went through Roosevelt's mother. And Roosevelt never roused the American people to oppose uh, the forces of the Axis. And I'm speaking German today. And there's a swastika behind me right now. I mean, one quantum event separates us from these parallel worlds. Now, some people ask me the question, well, Professor, if Nobel laureates are even arguing about this, then the question is, is Elvis Presley still alive in one of these universes? <laughs> Many would say yes. <laughs> well, believe it or not, there are physicists at Oxford University, David Deutsch, for example, who would say yes. There's a universe where the king is still alive. Wow, kids, we've got some things to think about. And we're, we're blown away if we uh, think there's uh, such a phenomenon as our dead aunt Lily talking, to, <laughs> talking through a medium to us, and you're talking about many different potential realities. Nobel laureates argue about this question. This is one of the greatest unresolved questions in all of physics. Physics is fantastic, it's incredibly accurate, but it's based on the cat. And at the present time, there's no consensus on the cat problem. There are hundreds of physics conferences. My friends attend these conferences. Physicists yell at each other. They scream at each other. Because what is at stake is reality itself. The nature of existence, that is what is at stake. I should thank you so much for taking time. My pleasure. His newest book, Parallel Worlds, focuses on the newest multiverse theories. I also loved his book, Visions, which extrapolates what our lives will look like 50, 100, 1,000, and even more years into the future. Like this interview, his writing is wonderfully entertaining. You can look at a complete selection of his work on his website listed beside his name on the menu. Until next time, thanks for watching.